Vidadha or Bhakti Rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Hare Rama Rama Hare Hare hmm. um, So go to the eighth canto uh, seventh chapter, verse number uh, 44. Uh, tapayante loka, tapayante loka tapena. Sarva prayaso janaha paramaradanam tadi purushasya kilatmanaha. It is said that great personalities almost always accept voluntary suffering because of the suffering of people in general. This is considered the highest method of worshiping the Supreme Personality of Godhead who is present in everyone's heart. Hmm. Here is an explanation of how those engaged in activities for the welfare of others are quickly recognized by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Lord says in Gita 1868 and 9, Yaridam paramam guyam abhateshwara varbhidashati one who preaches the message of Bhagavad Gita to my devotees is most dear to me. No one can excel him in satisfying me by worship. There are different kinds of welfare activities in the material world, but the supreme welfare activity is the spreading of Krishna consciousness. Other welfare activities cannot be effective for the laws of nature and the results of karma cannot be checked. <laughs> it is by destiny or by the laws of karma that one must suffer and enjoy. For instance, if one is given a court order, he must accept it, whether it brings suffering or profit. Similarly, everyone is under obligations to karma and its reactions. No one can change this. Therefore, the Shastra says, Tashyaivo heito pratite kovido nalabhyate vyad vamatam mupar yadaha one should endeavor for that which is never obtained by wandering up and down the universe as a result of reactions of karma. What is that? One has endeavored to become Krishna consciousness. If one tries to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world, he should be understood to be performing the best welfare activity. The Lord is automatically very pleased with him. If the Lord is pleased with him, what is left for him to achieve? If one has been recognized by the Lord, even if he does not ask the Lord for anything, the Lord who is within everyone supplies him whatever he wants. This is also confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. Teisham Ditya Vyuktanam Yoga Shema Vaham Yaham. Again, as stated here, Tabatya Loka Tapena Sarabad Prayausa Janaha. The best welfare activity is raising people to the platform of Krishna consciousness. Since the conditioned souls are suffering only for one of Krishna consciousness, the Lord himself also comes to mitigate the suffering of humanity. Yada yada hi dharma sya glanir bhavati bharatam abhutanam madharma sya tridhatraham sujami aham paritranayan sarunam vinasanaya chaduskritam Dharma samsta panartaya sambhavami yuge yuge. Translation to those two verses whenever and wherever there's a decline in religious practice, O oh, descendant of Bart, and a predominant rise of your religion, at that time I descend myself to deliver the pious and annihilate the miscreants, as well as reestablish the principle of religion. I myself appear millennium after millennium. Bhagavad Gita 4, 7, and 8. All the Shastras conclude, therefore, that spreading Krishna consciousness 
is the best wealth activity in the world because of the ultimate benefit this bestows upon people in general. The Lord very quickly recognizes such service performed by a devotee. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. But his verse is, is like foundational to understand the heart of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Lord also descends into this material world to uplift the conditioned souls, to uh, remove your religion in the world, and to reestablish Dharma. And so that is one of his missions. So anyone who, ex who directly supports Krishna's mission by helping to uplift the conditioned souls to Krishna consciousness, as it says here, is doing the highest welfare activity. And they are quickly recognized by the Lord. This is the Lord comes simply for this speech. As is mentioned here at the very end of the verse, the Lord is situated within everyone's heart. So everyone is very dear to the Lord. Everyone is, sometimes we say near and dear, and that applies to Krishna. He's very near and he's also very dear. Dear in the sense that he's always looking out for the welfare of everyone. And near because he is situated within the heart. So anyone who recognizes that all living entities are simply parts and parcels of Krishna, and they have a relationship with Krishna and devotion, and gears their time, attention, energy, and, and resources in thinking of ways to reach the conditioned souls with this message. Um, sometimes the, the world, they say we have so many problems in the world. And uh, that appears to be true from one level of perspective. Well, what it is, is that there are, there is one major problem, and that is people are not God conscious. When you apply what is needed to make God consciousness, you solve all the problems in that person's life. When it's done on a collective benefit, then basis, so many people benefit. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati is on record for saying many times, not just occasionally, that there's only one problem in the world, lack of Krishna consciousness. That seems a little hard to, uh, to accept as we see all the different problems in the world, and there are many. But you'll find that when you, a person is Krishna conscious, they don't have any problems. Or if there appears to be something that looks like a problem, it's easily solvable by the practice of devotional service. So this verse is illustrating something that is, uh, we can take heart in. If we accept this principle, that I am Krishna's servant and all living entities are also Krishna's servant. Some of us are fortunate and some of us are unfortunate. The fortunate ones have been, have, have had the opportunity to come Krishna conscious. The unfortunate ones either have, haven't had the opportunity or if they did, didn't come to Krishna conscious. So anyone, who works on behalf of the Lord. It's mentioned here in these verses 68 and 69 in the Bhagavad Gita, that anyone who makes their life and soul centered around bringing people to Krishna conscious, those persons are very dear to the Lord. They become recognized in the Lord. And Prabhupada even says something interesting. Even if you even if you really have no success in waking up people in Krishna consciousness, if you try to do that service, that effort alone is enough to get the attention of the Lord. 
that's how powerful the movement is because it is especially empowered by the mercy of the Lord himself known as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So anyone who follows that example and thinks of a way, and there are many ways that one can perform outreach. Um, there are many societies who don't believe in preaching. They believe that, you know, if someone comes, that's nice, but there's no, there shouldn't be any efforts to bring them. They have to choose on their own. They shouldn't be encouraged one way or the other. And for, they also believe that to associate with people who are not devotees, that association is, is not good. It's actually bad association. But that, but preaching means to give your association to someone and not to take their association. That means that you're giving them Krishna and not accepting anything material from them. That is, uh, that is giving them Krishna consciousness association rather than taking from them what they have to offer in the form of association, which is something material or something temporary. So we should do that and always be aware of the fact that we can leave any minute. Uh, what does that mean is that we don't know how much time, nobody knows how much time they have left. So if we really want to accelerate the mercy of the Lord, because we're always asking for mercy, but here's where the mercy is available. Of course, not everyone can preach. It's not easy. But here it says that those who do it, they accept suffering on behalf of the Lord. And that suffering is actually a form of happiness because it's done for the pleasure of the Lord. So any service that causes apparently some suffering is not really suffering. It's just apparent. And that will bring one to the lotus feet of the Lord. And Prabhupada said, even if you don't make anybody Krishna conscious, if you try, that alone qualifies to become recognized by the Lord. Bhakti Siddhanta with Saraswati would say, even if no one comes, preach to the four walls. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, I'm still with you. Yeah. It's been a long day and a long weekend, so we're a little tired here, but we'll still we're we're hanging in there. Uh, yeah, we had Rathi Yantri yesterday all day. And today we're in the process of doing more programs. So, uh, yeah, but uh, back to the subject matter under discussion here. Um, people are suffering. They think they're suffering from maybe not having enough finances, not having a good position in society, not having uh, or for suffering because of some disease. These things are just come with having a material body. The real suffering is 
lack of Krishna consciousness because that's the nature of the living entity is to become Krishna conscious. And the Lord will supply everything that devotee needs to do his service for the conditioned souls. That's the beauty of this particular this service is that when Krishna sees one is serious, he provides them with, the, with all the means. Okay, so um, when you give, you know, sometimes they say if you uh, If a person has debts, say a thousand dollar debt or a hundred dollar debt, and they have all kinds of small debts in between, if you just try to satisfy each one of the debts separately, then you have to work. But if you get a million dollars, then you can solve all the debts just by one solution. So here's just like the problem in the world now. So everyone is thinking, well, there's this virus and there's lockdown, there's restrictions, there's this, the list goes on. But if you're Krishna conscious, you can rise above all this stuff. There may be some disturbance. So this, again, here we are back to this, the, the topic that Krishna consciousness is the most important thing because it's what will make one uh, free from all types of suffering and bring them actually transcendental pleasure. So anyone, and it says, if you preach Krishna consciousness and someone that you make a devotee, so I say someone comes because of your preaching and that person becomes perfect and go back, goes back to the Godhead, you also go back to Godhead. Even if you're not qualified because you have brought someone back to Godhead, you get the benefit. In other words, you get to receive. So that's how it works. It's always beneficial for those who do it and those who receive it. Uh, and of course, the easiest way to, to spread Krishna consciousness is spread the holy names. Because by chanting the holy names, which is so easily easy to convince the fallen of the souls. Okay, so we'll stop here and see if there's any questions or comments. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, that was a nice class. Uh, the verse is very nice. <laughs> I really like that verse, Maharaj. Uh, it shows how compassionate the great personalities of Lord are. Like, yeah, the Lord is very... Yes. Inclined to anyone who makes an effort to reach the conditioned souls with this message. Yes. And uh, that was a very hope giving statement when you said that if we give Krishna consciousness to someone and if that person is serious and goes back to Godhead, then we also go back to Godhead. Yeah, yeah even Christ. if you don't make it, <laughs> but if you send someone else back to Godhead, mm. that's, your, that's your ticket back to Godhead too. Thank you, Maharaj, and uh, thank you so much for giving your time and decision to ready spot your hectic schedule. Thank you so much for that. Very grateful. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I request devotees 
If there are any questions, comments, reflections, please go ahead. Uh, Maharaj, uh, <clears throat> Maharaj, if you want, uh, we can take questions tomorrow also, if you're okay with that. If you I'm want. okay, but your questions will keep me going. If but nobody gives me any questions, then... <laughs> <laughs> My request to you, what is, please go ahead. <laughs> they can also talk about their preaching experiences. That would be topic of discussion. Hare Krishna Dear Maharaj, this is Dekha Mahalo, this is Sokola Sushila Prabhupada. Maharaj, you said that uh, not everyone can preach, but I was thinking maybe not in the direct sense, but I guess that if actually we really want to preach, we can always find a way to different ways of preaching, right? Yeah. Yeah, you can give it for shout them. That's also outreach. You can just just showing the way towards Krishna is a form of preaching. Directing someone to come to a temple. There's so many ways. Everyone can think of something to do. And also, I guess that uh, you said that it's hard to preach, but actually, is it actually hard to preach? Because I guess our anarthas, do, you know, we're trying to preach with all of our anarthas and attachments. This is what makes it hard. But speaking the, you know, speaking the glories of the Lord is actually the most joyful thing, right? Is this maybe the case? Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Bhutibhavana, <laughs> give us your uh, input. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for a wonderful class. And for, you know, <laughs> it was wonderful that I actually made it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Hatic Association, the Rafa Yatra, yesterday. I think it was, it was very enlivening to all the devotees who were there. That was a very joyful program yesterday. Yeah, it was very beautiful. Very beautiful. Um, so I had, I had one quite, I was wondering if you could share any thoughts, because you mentioned that there's many different ways in which we can preach. And we see, for example, Prabhupada did a lot of preaching through writing, and you also have done the same. So could you share with us any of the principles behind writing? So for example, your books also about you know, various aspects of your preaching, any insights about the mindset, the process, what Prabhupada said about it, why we should do it? Well, that's easy. All you have to do is take a topic, say association or the holy name, deity worship, Prashadam, and just research the topic. Then you can present that topic from a different, so many different angles of vision. You have enough material to do that. There is so much available. That's one way. Uh, another way is to see what's relevant, time, place, and circumstance according to the climate of the world at the time. And also try to inject, take those issues and use them as a springboard to present Krishna consciousness. That was what your Guru Maharaj did a lot, and devotees are doing it now. That's another way. 
these are two ways that you can somehow uh, look for ideas in order to write. Mm -hmm. Or you can speak about principles, mm -hmm. qualities, and then build it. So one of the, th one of the ideas that I had mm -hmm. many years ago, which when I was about to do it, somebody else did it. And <laughs> I was going to write, I was going to do a book on the six coast swamis and just, just research all of the information on each one of them, put it together and try to edit it with a, some commentary. But then again, right after that, some other devotee did the same thing. And so, and that came out first. So I thought, well, why well, try to compete? So I didn't do that. Uh, another idea I had was great men. You can do a research on very great people in our in our uh, culture, mm -hmm. and just just research all the material you can find on each one, put it together in a readable form. That's another idea. Mm. Or you can also talk about what you've done in your own preaching, make that a topic for discussion or further ex exploring that topic even more mm -hmm. through writing. Because writing helps you to explore things as you write. Mm -hmm. It opens up a, it opens up ideas. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Marge. Uh, just a, a quick question on, on something you've just mentioned, because it happened to me again, it, it happened to me also recently. So you mentioned how you had an idea and someone else had already had the same idea and they did they did that. Is so those ideas, is it so how do we understand that? Is it that it's something that Krishna wanted? And so he could and, and so he he puts the idea into the hearts of different devotees and whoever takes it forward at that time. Is that how it works? Or how do we understand? <laughs> we, yeah. In my case, I guess I was a little too slow in getting it done. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, there was, that book was needed. And then since then, there has been two or three other works on the same thing. Mm -hmm. I know since then, I know two other people who have done the same topic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much, Marge. Yeah, but I what you say, I think is correct. It was timely, and so it came out. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you, Mataji. Uh, Hare Krishna. Dhanat uh, Pranam, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Our glories to Srila Prabhupada, our glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for a very nice class. I just have a question, Maharaj, about like uh, convincing um, others about Krishna consciousness. Like if we visit like a family relative, sometimes like uh, we have a desire, but uh, uh, other person is like... Uh, uh, very well situated, like materially, and also material, like, um, uh, I mean, they're very superior in the material knowledge. And how to convince them, like, uh, you know, they think like, it's more like, uh, you know, um, sentimentalism, I mean, things like that, but have a desire and um, how to convince and how to like, actually, um, like, uh, you know, share this knowledge. Yeah. Well, you have to know the person and you have to know a little bit about the material that you're going to share with them. And you look for opportunities, that's all. It's an experiment. Bhakti Siddhanta explains that you have, when you have an idea, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that that's the end. The idea is the, is the, uh, is the, uh, is the thing that gets you going in a certain direction. But as you go in a certain direction, you adjust according to what's needed. So that's what, when, when it comes to ch talking to other people, you have to see how it's being receptive, receiving, received, or how it's not being received, whether you should change the subject. You know, it, it requires a little bit of uh, on the job training. Oh, okay, very much. So, 
Uh, also, should we look like other person need to be favorable to hear about uh, Krishna consciousness? Well, we say that, that uh, don't waste your time with people who are not favorable because mm -hmm. there are so many people who are favorable who haven't had the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So uh, if they approach us, uh, we have to share that. Like uh, if they are not very favorable, uh, not to waste time with them. Generally, yeah. Okay. That's that's a principle that we try to follow. Sometimes we try to go a little farther, but then if it continues the same way, then you think, oh, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it's like trying to put ghee on ashes. You don't get anything. Okay. Thank you, Guru. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Shri Devi Mataji, let's go ahead. Dear Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Gurudev. Thank you so much for your commitment to elevating and uplifting and nourishing us every day in spite of such a hectic schedule. Your sacrifice is deeply appreciated. Thank you so much. My question, Guru Maharaj, is about... I, I, got, I got two more programs coming up after this one. <laughs> oh, Krishna Chaitanya. <laughs> it's okay. It's nectar. <laughs> Thank I, I, I haven't recovered from yesterday, but it's okay. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you for your unending love and mercy on all of us. Deeply appreciative. If you want to stay alive, preach. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj, trying to stay alive. Um, Guru Maharaj, as uh, Sudha Mataji said, and we have all experienced this, that reception is very poor, especially in this age of Kali, where people are so preoccupied with sense gratification. But Sri Srila Prabhupada still says we must try. And he also goes on to say preaching is a thankless task. And still the preacher has to preach. So how we should keep our enthusiasm, our, our um, dedication to this uh, spreading Krishna consciousness alive, even in the face of opposition and difficulties. If you're preaching alone, it's pretty hard. But when you have association, then it becomes like teamwork, and then it becomes, becomes a nice challenge. It doesn't become discouraging. But mm. if you're doing it alone, it's really, really difficult. Right. Right. I look it's forward hard. to yeah, you know, it's hard to keep that enthusiasm up. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Because you get, but, you get, you get, you get, um, you get um, inspiration from others who are doing the same. When you're doing it together, it's you get ideas, you get inspiration. You get a chance to, you know, reevaluate and. Re, uh, redirect if it's necessary. So working with an association, working in a team, that builds up our individual efforts and it helps to become more efficient and if more effective also. Yeah. Once you get really, uh, what they call it, a seasoned preacher, then doing it by yourself is, is nice. It's easy also. But until you get to that point of being a seasoned preacher, seasoned preacher means one who preaches every day and has been doing it for many, many years. That is then as your service. You'll never get discouraged. Hmm. I see. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. My humble obeisances. Hare Krishna. How's your eyes, okay? <laughs> Not so okay, but it's okay. <laughs> Buy some of those eye wash. You can eye, do eye wash. They sell them in a drugstore. Yes. Eye wash, eye drops. 
Um, I can tell you what helps, what helped me is you take some honey and water, warm water and honey, and you mix it together and you place it right on the eye and close your eye for about a half hour. I lost my eyesight for a while and I did that and it came back. That oh. was an Ayurved Ayurvedic doctor recommended that and it worked, it worked really fast. Get some nice honey, you know, maybe the quality honey, and make it where it's not too thick. It's mostly runny, but it has the honey element in it, mostly water. And just put it right on the eye, close your eye, and in a few days you'll you'll be honey eyed. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to that, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. It, it works. It worked for me. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much for that tip. I just thought about it now. I didn't. Re I didn't remember when you wrote me your letter about it. Thank you. I will try that. Uh, yeah, just give us the report. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. I will. Thank you so much. Warm water. Yes, Guru Maharaj, warm water. I got it. Anyone else? Maharaj? Yes, go ahead, Mataji. Hare Krishna, can you hear me? Namrata. Yes, Maharaj. Uh, I just wanted to say I saw uh, Rath Yatra yesterday, um, witness on the uh, YouTube, it was quite joyful and uh, he has a lot of programs. Uh, saw you also, very enthusiastic uh, devotees. Uh, it was a nice uh, festival, Maharaj. Yeah, it was. I think the devotees were eager to break out and everybody broke out in a nice way. Yes, Maharaj, it was uh, the dance and all. Yes, I love that. The Odyssey dance and all. Very nice. Hmm. Oh. Yeah. Did you see the parade too? Oh, uh, yes, Maharaj. Hmm. Uh, I saw you also uh, dancing in the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah, that's. That's what we do. <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, I wanted to ask, uh, how can we preach in a subtle way when uh, the uh, the person is not exactly, you know, directly getting preached? Through you, can your, you, you can use yourself as an example. By practicing. So, yeah, just talk about your own experiences in Krishna consciousness and that in a positive way and that's that's preaching in a subtle way. Okay. Use your you do, use yourself as the subject matter and talk about your experiences and the things you do that raised you to Krishna consciousness. And they're thinking you're talking about yourself, but actually you're talking to them. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank or, you. Or, or you, what, what the Bhagavatam shows us as a story of King Prachini Barhi shit shot in the uh, fourth canto when Narada Muni is preaching to this king. And this king is very expert at performing furtive activities, but he has no devotion. So Narada Muni creates this fictitious character and then speaks about this fictitious character. Now this fictitious character is not a fictitious character, it's King Prachinavarhisha. So he speaks about his life in an, in an analogous form using various principles to, to bring out the analogy, but it's all about pra, Prachinabarhi shot. Finally, at the end, he gets it. 
but he can't recognize what Narada is, who is Narada talking about? Because Narada hides the names, he uses a different name. Oh, okay. Right. So you can make the characters, imaginary characters like that? Yeah, just make an imaginary character, but align it with uh, a little bit about that person you're preaching to, a little bit about their life. That's okay. a good way to subtly preach. You see the point? Yes, Maharaj. I have done it with my son, of course, but I haven't done it with any of the, you know, adult persons. Yeah. Characters. Okay. It works if you know how to speak about the principles and the activities without mentioning any names or without mentioning them at all. You don't, they, you're just talking to them, telling them about something, but you're telling them what you want them to hear that is beneficial for them. Okay, so basically you have to understand what they want to hear. Then you okay, all you have to know is a little bit about their life. So say they're not chanting Hare Krishna. So then you talk about a person who who wasn't chanting Hare Krishna, and then all of a sudden something happened and they start chanting. And they had all this, you know, spiritual happiness come, you know. In other words, their life changed for the better. So you use their life, their present situation and just build a little story around that. Okay, Maharaj. Thank you. That's subtle preaching. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Sometimes because uh, there are some people who are very rigid and who are not just rigid, but they, the person who are actually following one path, uh, they don't, uh, you know, open up even to hear about what we are saying. That is, is the reason maybe subtle preaching helps them. Correct. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, Maharaj, thank you very much. Do take rest, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. I don't see anyone raising hand, Maharaj. Or, uh, Okay, we can okay. stop here. We'll see yeah. you all tomorrow. Sure, Maharaj. Thank you so much once again. Thank you. Thank you. All the ways to Shilapo. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Thank you, Guru Maharaj.